Hi, good people. Titus here for another Unreal Engine tutorial, and in this video, I'll show you how to move your player characters around your worlds. This is a common stumbling point for newer developers, as the topic can be confusing, but essentially you have two main methods of moving players around the world. One method is through the physics engine, while the other method is through transforms. Let's tackle the physics option first. All right, starting off, we're gonna create a new blueprint class. It's gonna be of type pawn. Call it dp underscore marble, and we'll do another underscore, and we'll do uh, p for physics. We'll open that up here, and we're gonna add a simple sphere. We'll call it a ball, and then for the material, let's give it something interesting like wood. We'll do walnut, and then off the uh, ball material, we're gonna add a couple more things. One's gonna be a spring arm. And then off the spring arm, we can add a camera. We'll go back to the spring arm. Let's set the distance to be 600. We'll go ahead and rotate it 20 degrees. And then let's enable some camera lag. We'll do three for the speed and the distance for 500. And let's also disable the pitch, yaw, and roll. So now we kind of just have this simple setup here. We'll go back to the ball and let's set simulate physics to on. We'll get a mass of about 60 kilograms. And the mass does matter. Um, your forces that you impart on the physics object will be based on the mass of the object. So, um, you know, you may base heavier objects are gonna take more force to move basically. All right, up next we have to create the keyboard input mapping context file. To do that, we right click, go to input, and select the IMC. Give it a name. Then we can now create the input actions. We right click, go to input, select input action. The first one we'll call IA underscore uh, left right. And then the next one we'll do IA underscore up down. We'll want to go into the uh, IMC file and we're gonna add some mappings. The first one is our left, right. And then the second one will be our up, down. For the uh, left, right, we can add the keyboard. Um, we're gonna be using the A key. And then we're also gonna be using the D key as well. And then for the up down, that's gonna be W and S. Now for the S and the A keys, we're gonna to need to add a modifier. So this will be um, right here, we'll hit the plus sign. And then the option we want is negate. And the reason we want that is because we want to be able to get negative values to affect our uh, transform. Um, all right, and then uh, next up, we want to go into the actual actions. So for the left, right, we're gonna switch this to a 1D axis uh, float. And then for the up, down, we're going to do the same as well. And then I think for this example, we will also add something that comes with the starter content. So we'll go ahead and add one extra mapping. And the mapping is going to be the IA underscore look. We don't have to actually make that one. It comes uh, standard with the uh, starter content. Uh, but you will have to map it to a um, either a controller or a mouse. In this case, I'm gonna use a mouse. And I'm gonna use the uh, XY 2D axis. And then that should complete our keyboard setup. All right, now we're gonna come back into our blueprint and now we need to add the code to the event graph to actually make the uh, object move using physics. Uh, the first thing we'll need to do is we'll need to hook into our enhanced input system. So we can do a begin play reference. Call that into a cast. And we'll do the player controller. 
pull off the object into get controller. And then off the as player controller, you can do a search for get enhanced input local player subsystem. On a successful cast, we'll do a is valid check. Hook in our output there into the input. And then off the uh, blue pin, you can do a add mapping context. And if you remember, this will be the IMC that we created earlier. In my case, I called it IMC underscore controller. And this will complete the uh, enhanced input uh, controller settings. So we can comment this and just call it controller. The next thing we need to do is we need to handle the uh, look code. So that's going to be I underscore look. And this is part of the starter package. We didn't actually make this one, but we can borrow it. Uh, off the uh, action map uh, or action value, you can right click and split it. And then you can simply drag off and do add controller yaw input and drag this into add controller pitch and then the x value will go into the yaw and the y value will go into the pitch and then we comment this as our look code now we need to handle the movement code which is our left right up down so that's i underscore uh, left right and then we also have the I underscore up down. Now this one's going to be a little bit tricky since we're using physics. We need to work with forces. Um, the controller inputs basically just add a value between 0 and 1. And that's not going to be enough force to add our 60 uh, uh, kilogram uh, spear. It's too heavy. Uh, so we can add a variable and call it force. change this to a float and then the starting value that I found works pretty good is 50,000 and then uh, from here we can basically come off into the we'll use the default scene route because we need some type of reference and then from the uh, left right we can drag off and get a right vector And then off the action value, which is our, our uh, keyboard input, we can drag that into a multiply. And then we'll add our force into the multiplication. And then off this return value, we can come into a multiply and hook up this pin in here. And then it's as simple as dragging the ball static mesh out, pull off that, and just do a add force and the force value being a multiplication of the right vector and our um, impulse force that we created as a variable. Put this up here, and that should complete the left-right. We're gonna do something similar for the uh, up-down, so we'll drag the default scene uh, in, and then we can get the forward vector for this one and again, we'll drag off into a multiply node, add our force for the multiplication, and then I'm gonna drag off the forward vector into a multiply node, hook this pin in there, and then it's more of the same. We're just gonna drag the static mesh in, drag off that to do add force, and this time the force is going to be a multiplication of the forward vector and our force value. With that set, we can comment this out. And this is our simple movement code. Not much to it. All right, we're back at our main project. Uh, we have our marble created. Um, what we can do now is come into the project settings. Under maps and modes, you'll have to go to select game mode and change the default pawn class to your marble. And then if we play, you should notice that you can move the marble around and it should work uh, pretty good.
Nice thing about physics is you don't have to worry about any animation data, um, at least in this case for the marble, because uh, it can move it around for you. It does all the rotation and transforms just based on the physics engine, so that's a huge advantage. Um, but let's see what this looks like uh, using the other method, uh, transformation. Alright, so we're in our blueprints folder. We can right click, do a blueprint class. This time, we're going to do type character. We'll call it pp underscore marble, and I'll call this t for transform. Double click to open that up. And uh, you'll notice it actually adds the character movement in for us. We can actually use this to move our character around. Uh, in terms of the transforms, the way it works is, let me just switch this back to the uh, third person character and play. Um, transforms basically just move the capsule component around. Um, so they're, you know, they're changing vectors, they're changing rotations, uh, and then we kind of fake the, uh, the illusion of movement with the actual character uh, through an animation component. So we're basically animating the mesh in place and the mesh stays parent or uh, basically the capsule component is the parent of the mesh so it goes where the, uh, the capsule component does. Um, but it is very much just animating in place. Uh, so we move the capsule collider around and then your, you know, your static mesh is animating and it just gives the appearance of uh, or the illusion of actual forward movement you know from like moving the legs and arms and stuff but it's all fake um, yeah so that's basic principle anyways uh, let's go ahead and add a spring arm and then just like before we're gonna add a camera and then we'll have to do some quick setup on the spring arm let's change it to 600 and then we will pitch it 20 degrees We'll then do, we'll get rid of the pitch yawn roll. And then let's go ahead and enable camera lag again, three and 500. All right, and then off the mesh component, we can add our static mesh that we, uh, that you would have had to have created in uh, like a modeling software you got from the store or something um, and then uh, when you compile you can then add like maybe we do a wood element let's do walnut again and with just that um, we're almost ready for movement we do need to add the code to actually move it around because we're using the character movement component we can actually steal um, the starter contents uh, movement component because it uses the uh, the same character movement component. So you can just come in here, copy, and then come over here and paste it in. And if we go back to the project settings and change this to the new marble, then you'll notice we can actually move uh, the mesh around. Now there is a problem with this one though. Uh, as you can see, it's not really rolling. So, I mean, there's a few issues. It looks a bit big, too. Uh, that's because of my export. I didn't get the size correct. So, we come to the mesh. Let's maybe try a 0.6. And then maybe let's drag this down a bit. And that looks a little bit more realistic. And you can also notice this marble can jump uh, because I have access to the movement component. So how do we get it to look a little bit better? Well, that's through the animation states, right? Um, so what you can do is, uh, under the actual um, component, there's a animation class, uh, and you can add your animation blueprint that you would have had to have created inside, um, um, well, Unreal. So you're creating the animation blueprint, but it's driven by like a state machine. And then the state machines are basically a collection of animations that you made in your 3D software. Those animations are then attached to an armature, which is basically just a skeleton. And then you export the skeleton along with the, the actual model into Unreal. It'll see that animation data, and then you can create the animation blueprint just with that. Um, 
but that alone is not enough to transition to the states. So you can either do like a blend space setup or you can do individual state machines with uh, exit and enter points. And you can control these points just by uh, referencing the actual player's velocity uh, or the speed. And then you can see the changes in different vectors on the X and Y to tell which direction they're going. Uh, and that'll let you know which actual um, animation state to be playing. So you can see that uh, it's a little bit trickier to set up and it usually requires a little bit more work. Um, so the physics engine is kind of like an advantage in that respect, but uh, not everything is a spherical ball. So physics doesn't always make sense. Like on a rigid body, like a, hu a humanoid, you, you know, you, um, it may not work too well for you basically. Um, but with that, we can compile and play. And now, whoops, actually I forgot. My mesh needs to be rotated negative 90 degrees. And then it is pointing forward. There we go. And you can see I can go forward, I can go back, I can go left, and I can go right. I can even go forward and just change the, uh, the mouse uh, direction and it'll actually move the, uh, the player around as well. Again, this is just faking. This isn't real. So it, it's moving. We're just moving that capsule component. Um, we're not actually rotating uh, the component at all, which if I compile and save, you can see that here, right? So again, this is more of that illusion factor. So when you're, you're building your projects, um, you know, you, as long as you understand that you can do like a physics-based movement system or you can do a, a transform-based movement system, there are tricks that you can do to make, you know, both work, uh, depending on what you're actually going for. Uh, actually, your project will likely include a mix of both physics and transforms to move objects around your levels. Uh, the most common example I can think of would be the classic ragdoll death animation, where your character kind of flops under gravity when your health reaches zero. Um, in a previous tutorial, I actually demonstrated a puppet movement where I used the transform movement on the root capsule component in conjunction with an animation blueprint to drive the anim states, uh, but I simulated physics on specific bones in the armature. So it created this weird style of movement that kind of looked like a puppet, like it was being controlled. Um, but it was essentially using, you know, I was using techniques from both styles, basically. So, all right, everyone, we'll cut it here. But if you found any informative value, please leave a like and a sub to help grow the channel. But as always, thanks for watching and see you on the next one.